So you have too much money and not sure where to invest in? Here are four key asset classes you can consider to invest in. Hi guys, Stanley here. We all know it is a struggle to reach a point where we will be able to save some money. However, it will also be a struggle once we save up our nest egg. What are we supposed to do with that saving? The usual route is for us to invest in some investment linked insurance policy where you might have to pay fees up to 40% of your invested capital in the first few years. Or you can buy unit trusts or other funds to pass that responsibility of growing your money to some fund managers. However, you might also suffer some sales charges up to 5% and also a yearly management fee that could be up to 2% of your invested capital. Paying a small percentage for someone to do the work might not seem like much, but given that most fund managers end up underperforming the major stock indices, you might be able to achieve similar level of return by yourself without all that fees. And if we assume that you are able to do similar returns, then all these unnecessary fees could potentially reduce your potential wealth by half after 30 years of investing. So is it a good enough reason to start investing on your own? If you plan to do just that, then here are four key asset classes you might want to know about. Number one, property. This is one of the favorite asset classes for many investors. Properties can be grouped into four key types. Do you have residential properties where you can rent it out to people to stay in? You have commercial properties where your tenants are running an office or a retail business. And you have industrial properties for more heavy duty tenants. And lastly, you can also invest in agricultural properties, including farms, lands, and plantation. To buy a property is not that hard. You can shop for one on any property listing website. You can call the owner or an agent to inquire more about it. You might also want to visit the property before you buy. Then once you decided, you'll pay a deposit and have an agent or a lawyer prepare up the sales and purchase agreement with the owner. At the same time, you will also find a bank to source for a mortgage to finance that deal. Once you have your financing ready and after some document signing, you will just need to pay up the rest of the amount and you will be a new property owner. Some of the advantages of investing in property is that it allows you to leverage up your return. As we are able to get a mortgage for most property purchase, you can increase your potential return. For example, if your rental yield for that property is only 3%, but you're financing it by 90% with a loan, your gross return could be up to 30%. Of course, then you have to deduct off your interest costs, but your potential return might still be magnified. However, there are some disadvantages associated with investing in properties. The number one risk is also leverage. Because you're taking on a loan for an investment, you will still need to pay back that loan even if the investment did not turn out well. On top of that, there are many costs linked to investing in a property. Besides the usual agent's fee fee when you buy or rent out your property, you have the yearly municipal fees, your interest costs, property maintenance fee, and you might also need some cash buffer to prepare for any repairs that you need to do on the property. Personally, I was never a fan of property because of this issue. So moving on to the next asset class, bonds. When you invest in a bond, you are basically lending money to the other party. It could be a company or even the government. And they agree to pay you back with interest over an agreed amount of time. However, it is a misconception that bonds are always a safer asset class than others. If you buy a bond from a strong company or a government, sure, it can be considered as a low-risk investment. But there are many bonds issued by subpar companies and the chances of these bonds defaulting can be very high. And when a bond defaults, you could be stuck with a worthless investment. So bonds typically have a limited upside but still have a maximum downside. However, the advantages of bonds is that it could provide some cash flow for investors due to its regular payment. You can buy bonds through the bank or a stockbroker, or for some government bonds, you can even buy it directly from the government, either online or through an ATM. The next asset class is cryptocurrency. 
This is a relatively new asset class starting from the creation of Bitcoin back in 2009. However, with the explosive growth from Bitcoin and many millionaires later, cryptocurrency are now gaining mainstream acceptance. Today, you can easily buy cryptocurrency from crypto exchanges like Binance, Coinbase or Luno. Even traditional banks like DBS Group has also started their DBS Digital Exchange recently with investment from the Singapore Exchange. There are many cryptocurrencies available. Some of the more popular ones include Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, Cardano, Polkadot, Bitcoin Cash, Tether, Binance Coin and many others. However, cryptocurrency is still a very speculative asset class and the prices are just based on supply and demand. The Singapore government has recently warned investors to be wary of cryptocurrency as they are very volatile and not suitable for retail investors. So basically, buy at your own risk. <laughs> and lastly, the asset class I mostly invest in and is still very biased towards, which is stocks. Buying a stock is basically buying a part of a company. Most major corporations around the world are listed on stock markets. Do you like to drink Starbucks coffee? You can be a Starbucks shareholder. Or are you a banking customer with UOB Bank? You can be their shareholder as well. If we count the number of companies we interact with on a daily basis, you'll realize that you can invest in most of them. In my own personal life, I counted at least 30 companies I come across every day. You can buy a stock just through a stock broker where they will charge a small commission every time you buy and sell a stock. There are a few advantages with investing with stocks. For one, it is easy to buy and sell a stock. You can start with just a small amount like $1,000 and you can sell it off anytime you need the cash. Information about stocks is also transparent. Companies need to announce their performance and news about the business on a regular basis. So you'll be able to keep track of what is happening to your company. However, there are some disadvantages with stocks. Like cryptocurrencies, stock can be volatile as their prices are moving every day and you could lose your invested capital if you invest in the wrong companies. So all in all, there is no perfect asset classes where you can find great stable return with no downside risk. Every investment involves some risk and the key for us is to understand this risk before we start investing. However, if you spend the time to learn how to invest by yourself, you could potentially increase your future wealth significantly by not paying unnecessary fees and charges to fund managers or the insurance companies. If you want to learn more about investing, remember to check out our free investing course at valueinvestasia.com slash free course. And if you have gotten value out of this video, I hope you give us a like. And remember to share and subscribe so you don't miss out on any of our videos. As always, my name is Stanley. Till we meet again, invest safely.